Unfortunately, uh, Dr. Dieter Gruen was not able to, to join us, the, the plenary speaker, because he has already 97 years and uh, he went to the hospital, so it's not in very good conditions to, to travel. So instead of him, uh, the plenary lecture will be given by Professor Rodrigo Martins, and the title of the plenary will be, is Shaping the Future of Science and Technology with Materials. Okay, first of all, um, before starting, I would like to thank um, also the sponsors for, all, for this event, for helping us, and also all the invited speakers to come here. So what I will try to, to speak with you is to give you uh, some of the highlights that I believe that are fundamental for the progress of science and technology. And this is um, really based and the, the pillars for this sustainability are the materials. So I will try to, to explain what are the challenges and how this will impact in the future and what could be the roadmap that we have to fulfill to reach this type of targets. So this is some of the, the general outline that of the things that I would like to speak with you and to share with you. So what are the challenges that we have today and uh, how we can progress beyond these challenges and what we call the, the value of death and how we can really uh, get the missions of the future because the idea is how we can go and what should be the best model to impact on the comfort and welfare of the people for the future. So, <clears throat> first of all, let me share with you what are the great uh, challenges that we have today. One of the, the key issues coming with the, the so-called uh, Internet of Things, and the Internet of Things means that what are the type of commodities that we, we, we require uh, to sustain uh, our development. And uh, if, if you can see uh, on this type of developments, you, you can see that the progress that we have, for instance, saw with the uh, uh, things that uh, we look, for instance, the great invention of the century, uh, of the 21st century, which was the tablet, everyone thought that could have a strong progress. And in fact, if you see the progress is not so huge as expected. The targets, you can see it uh, on the this, those are data uh, that you can call Arbitex. Um, but when we try to, to, to find the systems and the product for our welfare and comfort of the citizens, so really what we can call democratized science and technology, it means that you have a huge, much, much huge increase that uh, we require for all this type of development. And of course, for all of this, uh, we need devices, and devices are based on materials. And typically, the things that we are looking for the materials and for the devices is that they should be ownership and disposable, because this means that we have to, to get uh, eco-sustainable uh, products for the development. Then, uh, as we want to integrate this, all this type of information, means that the second effort should, should be for seamless integration. This is something that is very relevant, is the print table and print simple electronics, for which we have to look after. And then, of course, for all these types of communities, we need energy. And energy, not only for cars, but also for the small uh, commodities. And this means that we have to look for power management. And the power management means that we have to look for the ways how we can control uh, the system, it means that I have to look for ultra low power electronic systems if I want to make this uh, platform absolutely uh, self sustainable. But it means also that we have to have not the continuous power of these platforms, but to have uh, electronics to control and just to make available the energy that we require when the consuming is needed. And then, of course, I need to have efficient wireless communication. As the electronics, new devices for wireless. This is something that, of course, we will be dominating the, the next year for silicon, because silicon is the king of electronics. But of course, we have other materials coming up, like the quantum computing and so on. But 
This is something that is questioning science and technology for the future. But we have also a second, a second uh, uh, challenge, and this is the challenge raised by the cloud computing. And this, this is really something very, very, very relevant for the future. Once, indeed, with the cloud, it means that we don't need to, to, to put too much effort in the development of the microprocessor. Because it means that most of the information is on the cloud. What we need is to, to develop the interfaces to connect us with the cloud. So this is something that will impact in the future. The, the very famous Google Glasses. Because it means that in the future, I can have all the information on my eyes, on my perspex. So this means that we have to implement and to e e improve the type of interfaces that can communicate between human and the cloud where we have the information. And interfaces and the surfaces interfaces is a really challenge for our future. And let's go to see what are the challenges for a better life. In fact, when we, we started by developing the, the so-called e-books, e-papers, the idea was to substitute the newspapers for tablets. And the tablets is something that I would like to say is like a fake because it's a display. And the idea is to have this rigid display and where we have the information. The, the information is completely stored and I will use as a book, as a newspaper, and is fixed, rigid, does not give you the flexibility. That's why the peak of selling the, the tablets was in 2013 and this kept uh, stead on, it's not been improved since then. And, uh, but you have other, other things that are facing our, our, our curiosity and our driving force. And this is a very nice picture on a train where I can ask you, you see the people, this is the King's Cross Road train that connects London to Cambridge. And typically, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you saw British guys reading the newspapers inside the, the train. Today, this is what you saw. There are no more newspapers. People use the mobile phone. And uh, of course, also you can see, most of the guys are not British. This is globalization of science. And the same you can find in the restaurants, in the containers. You found most of the guys, again, you can see uh, during lunch times, they use the newspaper. So it was a huge age. And this is not too much time ago, but this is what the people used to use. Today, you see young guys, and this is why they get information, through the mobile phone. So in fact, the mobile phones is the, the great interface that we could develop so far. And also you can see how the world has been changing. This is the way how we make the advertisements, okay? Okay, you have the placards, you have the announcements, and today you have displays that you can promote this type of information that you require. And, but this is how it happened in the past. You have, this is the mobile advertisement systems. You have the bicycles where you have the things to announce. Okay, this is how you propagate the information. Today, this is how you make the information uh, to get through. You, this is something that is advertising revolution. You have uh, the interface. The interface, the people can go and look at the surface and can interact and get the information that they uh, require. And so, <coughs> this is really the, the big prospects that we reach in the past. Also, <coughs> we also have uh, the information I can make the windows, the windows completely um, uh, alive and I can make the announcement <coughs> and have the surfaces fully transparent. And for instance, we are very proud because we have been involved on this type of technology. And this is the imagination of the future. I can exploit the surfaces and I can give life to the surface. So I may have the buses, so we are very close to the football stadiums here, but you can see, imagine that I can have a fully, fully uh, interconnected interfaces of 
of the buses of the future, where I can get information, I can get everything just by touching the surface. So this is something that will impact in our, in our subculture. And all of this, and one of the key issues for the future, as I told you, is the mobile phone. And the mobile phone really get a very strong <coughs> revolution, and this is the display. Because the mobile phone that we have is just the, the, inter the, the display revolution that we assist in the last 20 years, 30 years. And you can see how it has been moving the, <coughs> this, the displays, the, when we go from the very old analog and digital displays, from the computing sets that we have with the CRTs, then you can see that the fixtures that we got is going from the, the smart displays that we got and from the smart displays, the next generations that we have to look for after are this, the flexible and fully uh, integrated uh, on the surface, the information that I require and that I want to communicate. So this is the huge, the huge uh, uh, <coughs> movement that we did. And if you look, this is some image that we, we I think, uh, give us the, the, the strong impression how the things have been developed. You can see the, the first set of, of, of mobile phones. You see the display, very small display, and you have the, the, the buttons where you can communicate and get this type of information. And you see the size is almost the same, but the display area is by sure increases, which means that you have a more friendly interface to communicate with the people. And for instance, this is the type of the display as is giving the comfort of the people. Yes, and this is no more the cost that is the driving force, but the comfort that gives to the people. And I will go to this later on. And of course, this is the evolution. As you can see, it's not the size, but the interface, the display that is being increasing. Just to give you uh, this type of communication information. And this is a, a very nice picture taken in 2015 in the St. Peter Square in Vatican. This was during the, the, the takeover of the Pope Benedict XVI, and you can see that a few people uh, with a mobile phone, so, and you can see taking and lightning. This is in 2015. And you can see, not too, too late, later, so eight years later, you can see in the same place when Pope Francis took over, yeah, and you can see, this is not candle, this is this place. So it means that people buy this displays. Even the price is by far more expensive than the Nokia. Nokia, a Nokia uh, uh, <coughs> mobile phone costs 12 euros today. And you have a uh, Apple or a Samsung that the price is above 1,000. And people go to buy two gates to them comfort. So, we are, some, we are, of course, driving not only by the cost, but by the comfort that we give. And one of the things of the comfort, and if I want to make it, if you look for rollable and flexible and conformable uh, displays, this will be the future. And of course, as we are tackling with the materials and with devices, typically we look for things that will impact positively on our sustainability. So we are speaking about the very famous three R's, reuse, reuse, and recycle. So we have to try to implement commodities where we can really promote the recyclability of the products. But of course, this means that in most of the cases, we should try to target substitution. We, uh, we, we are hearing, for instance, the, the, the problem of plastic. The plastic was the best invention that of humankind in the 20th century. In fact, the, the packaging, the, the plastic packaging was really fantastic. And even for bacterial transmissions and also for, for conserving the, the goods, this was really fantastic. Even we got a Nobel Prize in 1952. And it gave a lot of, of royalties to uh, to Fronyoka, because it was really a good invention. But today we are living in a dynamic refrain. It does not mean that uh, what today is true 
tomorrow cannot be true. And this is a good example. So we have to look for substitution. And of course, uh, besides substitution, we have to design the materials. And this means where our imagination can go farther. Is how we can really design the new materials that are able to satisfy the needs of ultra low power consuming <coughs> that could substitute most of the commodities that we require for the comfort and welfare of humankind. And of course, all of this is to be aligned with what we call the circular economy. And this is really the things that we have to do when we are making and produce a product, we have to, to look for its uh, eco-sustainability. And this will be something that we have to promote. And that's why the materials has to be the, the central and play a central role on all, all this development. It means that it is not no more possible to make developments just to say, I'm making developments for science. No, I have to make developments to, that will impact on the humankind. And this means that I have to look for green materials. It means abundant non-toxic materials, and of course, to use green technology. So we believe that the future will be not to use the so expensive technologies like MBEs uh, and things similar, or using clean rooms facilities where we use very dangerous gases like phosphine, silent, and so on. We have to move for things that are very affordable for the people. So, and the chemical route will be, by sure, this, this way, how we have to develop for this type of low cost and disposable products. Of course, for ultra fast devices, we have a niche of application that still remains, but not too much time, maybe for the next 10 or 15 years. And of course, when we go to look for the materials, we have to know how to select materials. This is like a classroom. We have good students and bad students, okay? So we have to avoid the bad students in the developments that we want to make and to try to implement for materials for the future. And this is our responsibility to make this type of selections. And of course, <coughs> when we go to look for the materials, we have to look for the roots and the roots for the applications of materials, we have to see how I can exploit materials and the different type of, of organics and inorganic materials and how they could get, get some type of sustainability for the fruit. This is some examples. We know the oxide materials, the polymers, how this could be biocompatible, the perovskites, how I can exploit perovskites uh, uh, and to look for uh, lead substitution. And this means that hard pair of sky just central for solar cells. Can I exploit these materials for other electronic applications? Cellulose, paper, how I can this is the most abundant and recycled material. Silicon still is as, as a role to play on this ultra fast uh, <coughs> and disposable applications. The, the, the bottleneck of silica is because of recyclability. The costs associated are too expensive and so it means for low cost disposable applications we have to find alternatives to silicon. Then, of course, we have the piezoelectric and triboelectric. It means that we have to pay our attention in how we can generate gen uh, 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 energy to power all these type of, of, of commodities beyond the, the very famous <coughs> solar cells. And of course, we have to look for dielectric materials to make it the best insulators, very thin at a nanoscale that promotes the electronics for the future. And of course, for all of this, I need the tree. And the tree will give us the fruits. And the fruits will be impact in a plenty of the devices that we require. So in fact, what we have is to see how I can exploit the materials and to impact in different types of applications. So no more we believe that the, the, the use of thematic areas that was really fantastic uh, uh, in the last century is no longer more valid in the, in, the, in the 21st century because we need to see where is the best way I, where I can uh, use this material and of course exploit imagination. And this means that we have to bring also the citizens close to our decisions. And of course the challenges of the future that will sustain all of our developments and we have to think what could be the next, what could be 
really the problems that we have to, to challenge for the future. And I'm very proud that I could convince the Commission that we are in a change, we are now developing what is called the missions of the future, but I think that without the period there are no part of science and technology. I'm very proud that uh, at least it's been already defined that we will have a division called materials for tomorrow in the next uh, uh, program, which means that in, in spite of missions we have a division, that division should look for what will be an impact and what are the needs for the future. And of course this means that we have, this is the great challenge, and the great challenge is that we have to, to, to overcome in the future is how we can connect these ideas to the market needs. And in fact, we have typically the ideas, and the ideas is just like a tree in the make of the desert. And the ideas are typically crazy, perfect, good, or cool. It means that everything should be accepted to impact in our future. And then the problem is how I can make this the vital connection between the ideas to the market, and how I can make this type of the follow-up. Typically, we speak, and uh, the tradition is we have to bridge the gap between ideas to the market needs. And I think this is very, very antique. It means that this is like a, a very old Roman bridge. This is not what we need, because we are thinking about this for more than 20 years. What we need is how I can fill the gap between ideas to the market with really a great oasis, where we can really get the, the fruits. And this means that we have to, to, we have really, in one side, and this is the reality, the government and the universities that generate ideas, and on the other side, we have the private sector. And then, how I can fill this gap? With, and this means that how I can make the follow-up and this only can be done with the people. The people makes the difference, are not the orders, and they are the people, the quality, and there are a very famous words, brains bring brains, and this is what we need. And we have to impact and bring uh, brains from science together with brains from te technology, and see how we can merge to create a better future. And this is wha what makes the difference. And th for more and more in the future, what we are looking is the societal acceptance. And this is a dimension that the people are forgetting, is that it's not just make science because it's fetish, not making technology because it's fetish and because I will make some papers. No, we, I have to say how the society will make the acceptance of this. And I gave you an example. The, the low cost of mobile phone from, from Nokia that costs 12 euros and the high cost of a Samsung that costs more than 1,000 euros, and people buy <coughs> who? Not the Nokia. Nokia is now in bankruptcy with this uh, mobile phone. So, in fact, this is some uh, the dimension is not how to make money. It's how the society will accept the, the things that we are developing. And it means that we are, <coughs> this is the bottleneck of, the, of what I call the silos that were good to develop the science and technology where we have roadmaps for the health, for ICT, for energy, for water, and so on. And the idea is how we can progress and to find inside the energy or the health sector a product. And this, is, this means that during these stages we try to see what are the bottlenecks, what are the obstacles that we have to overcome until we reach the target. But when we reach the target on this type of silos and thematic areas, maybe we found that what we have been developing is too much complex, the costs are too high, and this means that we lose the center of gravity of the developments that we did on science and technology. The time of thematic areas, I say, is, is over. This is no more really relevant. That's why I believe that the missions that are connected with the big picture will bring better and better prospects and better and better uh, results for the future. And this is what I, I re really try to, to
to, pro to, to provide this type of information is just like a metro station system, where in each station, okay, we have, of course, uh, in each station, I can change the routes, I can change the lines. And this is an idea that I gave you, for instance, for energy, ICTs, and now, where, of course, I will need materials, I will need technologies to meet the development of the products, but at each station, I can always change the lines. And this means that we have to more and more to impact on interdisciplinary res research and, of course, to get transdisciplinary solutions. What means solutions that will impact in the comfort of the citizens. And this model will bring, in a nice way, we can fill in the gap. And we can give, of course, different types of, of examples. For instance, food, how to ensure a sustainable and safety feeding without waste, how to ensure the food supply for an increasing population. And this means that we have to bring together solutions coming from different areas, but always you found the need of materials. And of course, you can have also uh, missions connected to energy for all. What could, could we sustain and will impact in our lives for the future? And uh, this means that we have to impact and see that more and more we will need energy, the basis for impacting in our lives in, and in our future. And this is a very simple example where, for instance, it's not only for photovoltaics. I have to look for different type materials for building uh, and to conserve and preserve energy inside the houses, how I can improve the roofs, how I can improve the ceilings of my house, the windows of my house, and to, to reduce the consuming and to, to, to get the really something sustainable for the future. So this is an integrated mission, for instance, in energy, that we have to look for the future. And this means that the mission for the future should uh, really go from the classic multidisciplinary processes to, to the trans transdisciplinarity, which means that we have to involve in every development that we are doing the society, the city. And this is something that will impact and you have to look when we make a project, not just look for the science and technology, but bring the dimension of the population towards. And this will define the, the, the future of our development and of our dreams. And this is just a label. We have to start building this house and I proposed this some years ago and still is valid, this concept where we have to build up the different blocks of our society. And you see that we have the ITC, we have the agriculture process, the energy, the biotechnology, the electronics fields, the aerospace and aviation, the robotics, the manufacturing, and for all of this, we have to make the all these building blocks. We, we need, of course, security, transportation, we have to get what I call the materials from the house. And this concept is really valid today, where we have to bring all people and all the information together. And for this, we need to bring the associations that we have, that we require at the European level, where we can impact this type of device, of, of systems and missions for the future. We need network. This is not possible to be reached without network. And this is something more and more relevant when we look for the future and of the future where we need real networking. And this networking will impact in the, our community. And for this, we need, of course, the engagement of the global materials community. And this is science is global, is not private. So we have to look how this will impact in the future. We have the academy, we have the industry, and we have to match the interests. And this is uh, where we need, uh, really, the involvement of the science and technology societies. We have the opportunities, and we have to go for a top-down and bottom-up approaches, where, of course, we have to 
we have to exploit the and impact in our societies. The strategy of the future is really very simple. We have just to mimic the nature. And to mimic the nature means to promote the commodities that will impact in our society. This is just an example that I give you. And this example is to look, for instance, in the future we have <coughs> energy lighting, energy paper walls that we, I can really promote and move from the classical photovoltaics to lightning uh, flexible walls or paper walls, whatever you want. And I can integrate the, in the design of the future the, the energy harvesting that I require. This will be the prospects. And of course, I have to control also and to have the windows with, uh, that are with enough sensors and that will control the luminosity inside the house and will at the same time promote the energy that I require to give the comfort that I require for uh, having the comfort in house. And there are other things, and this is something that we are really impacting. Is yes, for instance, to use the most uh, known material for more than 1,000 years, which is paper. And we are very proud that here in Portugal we invented the so-called the paper electronics, and this has been very, very, and we are trying to exploit this community, which is very, very, very low cost <coughs> and fully recyclable for promoting the, 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 the commodities of the future. And this was, we are very proud, it's been published last year in 13 of August, a lesson on paper on the nature electronic as, as something that has been recognized during the International Physical Olympics 2018 that was realized here in Lisbon, where we have more than 400 uh, young guys and contesting and where we make the comparison between a paper transistor and a normal JFF. And this was made, we have to make more than 1,200 transistors. Even today, people are looking for this type of, of contest that really uh, was the acceptance by the academy that this is, and for, from the research, this is a community. Of course, we speak, but if I, put, if I put in a wet environment, they will resist, of course not, but I have, I have to, I can make uh, <coughs> the required uh, encapsulation of this commodity. But this is for low cost commodities that I can really dispose of very, very fast. And also, I would like to tell that this means that we have to promote and, uh, the new knowledge with the new jobs, with the new products, and we create in this area what we call the Alma Science Purdue uh, process. And for this, we have, of course, uh, international advisors, <coughs> and we believe that this will impact in the future of our lives. And I will uh, try to give you just an example of what we want to promote going from the security to the, the technology of the materials.
this is the concept that we are bringing together. And of course, we have space for, for suggestions and responses from working scientists. And remember that this is something that we are creating and this meeting is something that will impact on the ideas that, that we can generate and that we can promote and, and of course try to impact in the future of our life. And remember, science is not finished until it is communicated. And whatever you, you say, the communication of the science is made with scientific knowledge, with the conferences as we are promoting here today, with the papers that we are trying to impact in our lives for the future. And of course, what we expected from materials network is materials as enabling tool for the missions of the future. This is by sure clear. No materials, no party of science and technology. We have a robust coordination of materials and, educa and education research, development, and innovation through the varied activities at the national and global level. So this means that we need to have a clear, massive networking of materials at the national, at, at the international level to impact for the needs of our future. We have to promote cross-cutting interdisciplinarity to fast ecosustainability. So the silos of having thematic areas or thematic network on materials, on ICTs, on manufacturing is over. We have to try to bring and to cross-cutting in a different perspectives uh, different areas to bring, of course, the, the comfort that we need for the future. We have to propose new forms of collaboration between academia, industry, and the society as a way to overcome the lack of effective transfer of knowledge from fundamental and applied material research to the new project. And this is by sure. When we speak in things like uh, quantum computing or uh, we want to go for zero waste materials, else uh, uh, sustainable concepts and assuring a competitive te technology, te technological advantage. It means that I have to make a proper selection of materials. I have to design the proper materials that I require for the future. And this is the challenge of the future. How I can design new materials for the challenges of the future. So the tomorrow's materials division will, will have a strong impact it will be critical, and this is it, for the development of, the, of humankind for the future. And we cannot lo lose this type of prospect and impact that we require for the future of our developers. So what are the needs to overcome? We need money. No money, no money. So it means that we have to find funding mechanisms and global schemes to bring together regional and European Commission authorities for a better place. Of course, we are new, we are global, but we have to know how I can really link Europe to Asia, Europe to America, and how we can promote and faster progress in science, where materials is by sure the king of the party of science and technology. And now I would like to use and to show a proverb, an uh, African proverb, that we are engaged and very proud to have this 100 people that uh, integrate <coughs> the, the lab that I'm responsible in, in, in the FCTS, FCT Nova. And this is something which is really relevant for the future. If you want to go fast, go low. And this means that if you want to be uh, uh, Einstein, fine, but there are no more Einstein in the world. What we have today is a key one, and it means that if you want to go far, go together. And we need the co cooperation and the collaboration of everything. That's why I think mission will be relevant for the progress for, for our future, where we have to integrate different ideas, people with different schemes and with different culture to, to impact in our lives for the future. <coughs> and this is something that, of course, we have to look for. And this is how we can shape the science and technology of our future and where materials will play a key role. Then, of course, what we need. We
we need networking, we need people that are aware <coughs> about <coughs> the challenges and are committed to make a program for humankind. And <coughs> I would like to say and to say today that one of the people that <coughs> we are, and I would like to pay tribute, is to Mr. Carlos Moedas. Mr. Carlos Moedas, he, he was not a scientist, he was not a materialist, he never, I believe, uh, thought that science was something that I will be in fact. But he was really the guy, the commissioner. And I'm, I can tell you, because I have been in the past 25 years, 30 years, I know and I met different types of commissioners. <coughs> and he really, he, he created and generate impact in what he did during the four years that he was there. For instance, did you know that Europe was the leading society that could get the vaccine for Ebola? And who did this? It was this guy. Mr. Moedas, when he took the position in 2014, he asked if we have in Europe a crisis with Ebola. And he asked to the pharmaceutical uh, to say, I need a vaccine. <coughs> and they said, this will take minimum two years. But I said, I need it in six months because we have a crisis in Europe. Then he asked to the articles. And he said, can we have a vaccine in six months? Yes, if you give the money. And we got it. Then he creates the European Innovation Council as a reaction to the European issues of, of technology that has been also proposed by a Portuguese, which was Mr. Barroso. And in fact, what the European Innovation Council wants to be, wants to make the follow-up on good ideas and to promote the technology, to be the balance of what was created in Europe in 2004, thanks to another Portuguese, which was Mr. Zergago, the European Reserve Council. And the, the European Reserve Council just impacts on the ideas and stimulate good ideas for the future. And Mr. Moedas said, I need to have some type of balance. And the balance is how I can make also technology to have a strong visibility. We, we have no facts yet about this because it was created last year. I don't know if it will be good or not, but the concept itself is something that will stimulate the future our future. And even he, was, he has had the idea to create prices. And one of the, the great prices that he creates for science and technology that is really the father of this European Innovation Council was the prices for batteries. We know that we need energy for the future. And he created his price, 10 million euros. 10 million euros for someone that is able to come with a, a, an applied idea that I can take profit for the future. And of course, I'm very proud also because yes, and for this, we give him the Global Leadership and Service Award. I'm very proud that most and very distinguished colleagues at the European level voted 80%, not 100%, because we are not in a dictatorship system, for him to give this Global Leadership Award that I'm very proud to announce, to anticipate, that will be delivered to him on the 3rd of January in Brussels, because it is a for the thing that we do, and this is an example. To be a good coordinator of science and technology, I, not, I don't need to be a scientist. I need just to have good ideas and have to know how I can promote science and technology for the future. And of course, I'm also proud of the people that support us everywhere. And we are, of course, when I speak about this, it is not because I don't believe in FERC. No, I really believe in FERC. We have the best concept ever generated in the world. That's why we have four FERC running today in my lab. But of course, we need technology, and we need the European Institute of Technology. I'm very proud that my faculty, my 
uh, is, is, is a core member of the European Institute of Technology through the raw materials. We have projects uh, uh, around this, but we need international collaboration. We make, uh, and we have, of course, and we expect it, of course, to be involved in the future. And on the future, I would like to, 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 to pay your attention to this DMC material series <coughs> that you can publish as a high-ranking journal at the Nature Group, or if you are looking for the GD material, and the, the first GD material that everyone knows, and the great impact in that the first 2D material generated in our society was graphene. Graphene is the first 2D material and will not be used for making the best transition in the world. No, this is a fake news that sometimes we have to see some type of responsibility. But the great advantage of graphene is the first 2D material that can be exposed for everything except to make transistors, as it was promised. And, of course, if you want to look something for <coughs> what we are doing on metal oxide nanotrition, still buy a paper book that we just launched last year with the Elsevier. And, of course, if you want to look for things about transparent electronics and paper, look also to the books that we edit or that we participate. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. We have uh, some time until the, the coffee break, and this is quite good because we can interact and have a lot of questions or comments. So the floor belongs to you. If you have any question or a comment, please. Identify yourself and make the question or comment. I'm Pietro Solme from uh, the International Beer Nanotechnology Lab. Uh, thank you for the nice presentation. I'm wondering how do you see this metro subway system being supported by, is it by funding agencies, by societies like, like the ones here, or by governments, or it has to be driven by the researcher themselves? We should start making, thinking on creating these structures and these things. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your question. The metro station concept is really the name that I would like the commission to adopt, but are the missions. If you look for the missions that has been established by the Horizon Europe uh, program, it means that they will uh, promote the cross-cutting effect. And of course, this type is just, is just like a snowball effect. And we need, of course, to start at the national level with the national authorities in Portugal, in Germany, in whatever you want to call, the promotion of this type of concept where you have to bring together people from different areas and try to integrate. And of course, you have some type of critical missions. And the critical missions are energy, water, food, climate change. And then what we need to promote this type of areas, where this will impact in the future. And energy, typically when we speak in energy, I know that you work in energy, we are looking for the batteries, the car, the electrical car of the future, the solar cells for huge uh, amount of, pr of, of promotion of energy. And this is, this is something that is relevant, but it's not only this. We have to look for the other type of energy, how I can integrate energy, how I can integrate the different type of green energy that I have available to make self-sustainable and lasting absolutely independent platform. For instance, how I can recycle CO2. And uh, not to say it's a bad material, but it's a good material that I can reintegrate in the process. Why not? And look for reasons for how I can integrate it in a better way with the better solar cells. Because remind this, the citizens today, they pay the invoice for the energy because it impacts, is good for humankind. But 
they don't want to make it this payment forever. So we have to fight for high efficient solar cells. Okay, how and this is not to look for 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 what? You have to look for different materials, different integration, because you have fixed costs that will keep the cost as it is, unless you make a great impact where you can really go for 30, 40 percent solar cells efficiency. So the, the, the metro station concept is how I can discuss with the people with different areas and to promote, for it, we don't have, in Portugal we don't have a mission program. You have the materials, you have the nanotechnologies, you have the ICTs, you have the energy, and this is no more the great concept. So, and I cannot make it alone. We have to, to make some pressure to say, let's expand the concept of mission inside our own, in Portugal, in Germany, in, in Finland, in USA. In USA, they, are, they have uh, the National Science Foundation are something similar to missions. Thank you very much for your talk. Very impressive, the research in the field of paper. I have also a question in this uh, direction. If we see how newspapers are manufactured today, it's really a high-speed process. Uh, the processes you have shown, also printing processes, I'm expecting are today much slower. Uh, which uh, perspective you see or which chances to make also these innovative processes of um, functionalizing, to bring new functionalities to the paper, to make it more productive in future? I, I believe that um, we are in cross-cutting uh, roads. The 3D printing and the laser printing, digital printing technology will be the key, the key issue for the future, either for printing technology or even to uh, exchange the functionalization of the surfaces. I think that we have more and more uh, challenges concerning how I can promote and uh, uh, turn the surface smart. I can give you an example. For instance, I can, in paper, I'm just giving the, the paper, but could be an, any other flexible surface, I can, by controlling and by digitalization, by controlling, by laser printing, I can graphitize or graphenize the surface. For instance, I can print an antenna on paper and using the same material to, to, to design my antenna because I can graphenize and I can have a very high conductive surface. Or, for instance, I can embed some nanoparticles and by laser printing, I can digital like as I have a PCB look at, as a PCB in the past but everything is inside the surface now by controlling the, the the power of my laser printing I can define different type of, of, of materials behaving in different way so if I want to go faster I have to go for digital printing by sure I have to, to, to control and to have uh, diff penetration controls of the power inside my surface and everything will be, it will be made in the first 200 or 300 nanometers of the surface. So more and more surface functionalization will be the challenge f at least for this type of commodities. And even if I want to speak about uh, uh, industry 3.0 or 5.0 where I can make this 3D holograms on the surfaces, this means that I, all these technologies, all this manufacturing process means that, and this is the idea I'm selling from my, my institute, is that the complexity does not go for the integrity of the circuits, but the complexity goes for the functions that the circuits can make it. So I will design circuits simpler circuits, but they are able to make uh, complex functions. And this means that I will reduce the number of materials that are required to make this, and I reduce the energy that are required to make the same working. 